This is the video audio program of Silicon Valley Career Women called Women Leadership Enhancement. Folks, welcome to episode number five of the Women Leadership Enhancement series by Silicon Valley Career Women. My name is Michael Butler and I'll be the host for today's episode. I'm currently at TPM at Google where I've been there for the last five years. Prior to that, I was with Microsoft uh, for eight years. And today we have a very special guest joining us. Uh, please welcome Mary Yang, who is the Chief Product Officer at Spiegel. Hello, everyone. Okay. Um, we've asked Mary here today to talk with us about how to succeed as a product manager. We've also have a live audience with us today, and I'd like to thank you all for coming out uh, for the podcast here at JJ Lake Business Center. After the, uh, the main part of the podcast, we will have a Q&A section with questions from uh, members of the audience. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, Mary, would you mind sharing some of your background with us? Sure. Mm -hmm. My name is Mary Young, and I'm currently the Chief Product Officer at Smule, and I manage the product and design teams and also drive the overall product strategy. Prior to joining Smule, I co-founded the U.S. division or incubator for Renren, Ren, which is a pretty big public company in China, uh, which owns, quote unquote, the Facebook of China and many other different entities. I got my bachelor's degree at Tsinghua University in China and my master program at Stanford University in management science and engineering. Mary, would you mind explaining for us what a chief product officer does for a company? Sure. There may be some differences between a company to company, but I'll just give a general summary over here. Mm -hmm. So first of all, obviously the chief product officer will need to work with the CEO, other executive staff members, and like other members of the company to develop a product strategy for the business. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it may be a three to five year strategy of what the company wants to focus on for the next period of time. Or sometimes it could be on the following year. For instance, in Q4, a lot of companies will be doing planning for the following year as to what they want to focus on within the next year. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, the chief product officer also has management responsibilities. In most of the companies, they would be managing the product management department. And in some companies, they could also be, in addition, overseeing design or engineering or project program management or sometimes even data. Wow. That's a lot of stuff on your plate. So you're also overseeing the entire current and future revenue growth of the company, where they're going to the, the different markets, uh, as where you want to go to in, in the future as well. What um, would you say that it takes to succeed there as a product officer and what are some of the key things that you, you think people should focus on? Right. So I guess there may be some differences uh, based on what the company is and also what stage it is at. For mm -hmm. instance, if it were an early stage startup, then I would say the most important thing is for the CPO and CEO and the team together to really figure out a product strategy that can achieve product market fit. And mm -hmm. from there, you can really develop and grow and hire more people. And if it were a more mature business at a certain large scale, then I would say the hiring and management part becomes even more important. And because like you can't really scale as one person, whether okay. that is the CPO or the CEO. So every team member that you hire is going to determine where you can go in the future. And great talents bring in other great talents as well. Okay. What are some of the, the key skill sets that you, you look for when you're hiring a, a product manager? Right. Uh, so product manager, as many would say, is almost like a mini CEO of a company. And they mm -hmm. really got to have the sense of responsibility, the sense of urgency, and also need to have fairly good people skills to really coordinate and motivate a team together to work on something. So the areas that I would generally look at, first of all, is their attitude. Are they a team player? Are they really a good cultural fit to the business? And mm -hmm. the second thing I would be looking at is like whether they had made certain impact in the past. This is really for someone who has been in the product management career for some period of time. And generally, a good PM is able to drive good results, and they should have something to share about how they were able to achieve that and what were some of the difficulties that they had to overcome. And if it's a mm -hmm. fairly uh, junior PM role, then I would be looking at their learning potential. Do they like? Do they really uh, have good logic and do they mm -hmm. understand numbers? Do they have basic problem solving skills? And moreover, I think uh, PMs need to make decisions all the time and they need to be comfortable making the decisions when they collect enough information from everyone. So the assertiveness 
and whether they're comfortable of making decisions is going to determine like how far they can go in their product management career. Okay, and if we have some, we have many of people who are listening who are probably interested in becoming uh, PMs. Um, where would you suggest that they begin to look uh, in terms of school, books, mentors, any, anything that should create that foundation for them? Right, I guess you're referring to those who have never been in product management before and Correct. want to get into the area. Well, it is always like difficult to start as a PM mm -hmm. because for most companies, uh, even for bigger companies right now, they generally will be looking at your resume and say, did you have product management experience before? Mm -hmm. So that zero to one sometimes is quite challenging for a product manager. So I would say the best thing from my experience is to go find some company where you could actually have a product role. Sometimes it may not be directly product management, but in some companies they actually do have product strategy role or marketing strategy or user research roles where you can get closer to product management and be able to observe how other PMs actually drive things day to day. So I would say being able to land an internship or project somewhere where you work in the real environment is my recommendation as a first step. Okay. Uh, my personal experience is very, very similar to that. We, usually don't have people that come in directly as PMs. They usually either come in as engineers or in tests and they're able to build that, that foundation so that they're able to have that relationship with the engineers for building that, that product. Um, I find that if PMs do not have that strong technical foundation, um, it becomes very difficult to create that very good, strong working relationship. Right. So Mary, could you tell us a little bit more about how you go about supporting your PMs in their, their growth path and their career aspirations, whether it's within or without, without the company? Right. Uh, so I think the, the first thing is that uh, really discovering what they're interested in doing and really helping them to focus on something that they're passionate about. Uh, obviously, once in a while, I would also encourage them to take on something that is slightly different from before. Hopefully every year they get a trial something that they're half familiar with and half of it they need to figure out. So they keep on taking new challenges and they feel that they can keep on learning. So that I think is pretty critical. The other thing is uh, whenever they're actually taking on something, uh, give timely feedback. Uh, mm -hmm. So obviously that doesn't mean micromanagement, but at the very key areas, you can obviously be checking in with them and also ask questions. Uh, don't always try to lead them to a particular answer, but you can ask questions to encourage them to think more. Uh, and after they think more about it, sometimes they would still stick to the original answer and sometimes they may come up with something different. And other than that, uh, sometimes doing peer reviews or 360 reviews is also very helpful in helping mm -hmm. the PMs discover uh, how different groups of people actually feel like a working with them together. So this can help them discover both their strengths and also the opportunities for improvement. Okay. And generally for the opportunities for improvement, there are plenty of ways to improve them. For instance, mm -hmm. in communication, so there could be communication workshop or coaching that can help them very actively improve in it, so as with other areas as well. Okay. Do you find uh, Toastmasters to be something effective for a lot of the PMs or in terms of uh, speaking for presentations, or do you think that there's other avenues that, that are more effective uh, or so, equally effective? Yeah, so I think uh, definitely having one-on-one -on -one coaching is going to be pretty effective. Obviously, there can be larger workshops where people talk about like more generic things, but oftentimes mm -hmm. the first couple of like little things are easy to overcome, mm -hmm. but there could be other areas that are just difficult to overcome. And sometimes it does take a little bit of one-on-one -on -one coaching to help the person at least understand like other person's perception better and also mm -hmm. to reinforce what they have learned maybe in a workshop or in a class to see how they're actually doing. Okay. Do, do you ask your, your PMs to put this as a OKR uh, for each quarter, so, say this is an area that they're going to be working on improving or is it more of an open-ended aspect? Right, uh, so there could be OKRs that are more tied to company-specific goals, and there could be OKRs more tied to like soft skill development. And I would like to keep it flexible, actually. Uh, so if there's no obvious thing to improve for that period of time, then potentially, more importantly, is for this PM to focus on the thing that they're actually working on, because that in itself is a 
the probably the best learning experience out of、mm-hmm. all. So I would just keep it flexible and really do it depends on what the person need at that time. Okay, so just make sure I understand. Talked about、uh, the three sixty reviews, the the one on one feedback on it. Uh, in terms of the personal counseling, to find out their areas that they're interested in, in terms of growth, so that you can help、uh, funnel them into the the right directions on it.、Um, right, that's a great summary.、Hmm? Okay, we're、uh, now done with the main part of our podcast, and so we are going to be opening up、uh, to questions from the audience. So we have our our first、uh, audience member here. Could you please introduce yourself? Sure.、Um, hello, everyone. My name is Min Chen.、Um, I work for a startup company called、uh, Serious Imaging.、Um, it's a company about、uh, precision agriculture. And、um, actually, I'm like in the startup company. I'm going to transit into、uh, project manager pretty soon. So I think I have a question that's pretty related to the、uh, like the communication you guys have. So like、um, you guys referred a lot to the PM today. So I know, like, there are multiple positions in a company that can be referred as PM. Could be like project manager,、uh, product manager, as you guys were talking about, and also program manager. So I wonder if you guys can talk a little bit about like what's the difference between those different roles and how do those collaborate with each other? Thank you. Did you want?、Uh, I guess Michael got the program manager part. <laughs> <laughs> so、uh, that's a very good question because it it is very confusing titles and it depends on where. Which company you're at? So,、um, like at Microsoft, you have PM、um, stands mostly just for project manager.、Um, sometimes people do call themselves product manager as well. There is no real management of anybody or person at all. But you have about eight different types of PMs with Microsoft. Um, you have some that go towards the technical side. You have some that are feature PMs. You do have some people that are doing、uh, project management as well. Project management is more of doing the overall scheduling of、uh, your. That would be a release manager, is what you see in some other companies there, where they're just、uh, doing a lot of、uh, work towards you know, again coordinating across the different teams, especially when you have working with、uh, other external. Entities to make sure schedules are aligned, that you, you know your features are prioritized correctly, and they're working on a much much more higher level of what you have for your re- release cycle, and that's something that's more in a traditional waterfall type of approach.、Um, not so much once you get down towards a sprint approach because、uh, the waterfall model doesn't work too well there. But despite what most Companies and people want to say the waterfall model is still always would be essential because you do need to do that long term planning. As as Mary talked about doing that two, three, five year you know forecasting there, and so while waterfall has a bad connotation, it's still there and it's very critical. And so as slide aside on it, but so now many of the companies here in the, the Bay Area, you have the the product manager、um, like. And many of those are not quite、uh, in terms of the, the technical side. They are working with、uh, the customers. They tend to be the voice of the customers, working with the various product teams. For here's the, the feature that you want to be able to have and develop.、Um, then you also have your your TPMs. The the TPM is essentially、uh, well everything that you have. Into a product manager, but of course with the the technical aspect of it. So they are someone that also functions as sort of a, a semi semi architect. You have to be able to go across all levels of a, a project. You have to be able to go deep down with the devs, and also be able to talk up to the C level suite about what's happening with your product.、Um, so you need to be able to do design reviews, budget forecasting, capacity planning. Um, identifying what are all your current risk levels w- that you have within your product, and make sure that not only are you prioritizing, but you're prioritizing correctly. And so you, you check your assumptions. You check your assumptions twice there, and then after that, you check them again just to make sure because everything is very volatile. And it's changing all the time.、Um, but Either either way, again, you're you're still working and designing some type of product or feature. 
Um, and it depends on that, that how deep you, you want to be able to go into that product. If you want to become that, that subject matter expert within that field, um, you can start looking towards on the, the TPM side. And you, you can also start doing blogs, articles, and you get a lot of uh, get additional invitations to conferences where you'll be able to speak also towards devs and not just uh, on one subject, but on, on many ones. This episode is sponsored by JJ Lake Business Center. JJ Lake is a newly renovated co-working space located in Mountain View, Silicon Valley. They aim to foster innovation and growth through community events, partner collaborations, and global market access. You can start a free month trial with JJ Lake Business Center by using the discount code SVCW. Please email JJ Lake Business Center at info at jjlaker.com for more information and to activate the free month trial.